or pay. Religion is something that inspires people all over the world. It has been crucial to our way of understanding the universe for centuries. Now, most of the people are born into a certain religion. However, in the end, faith is something we choose for ourselves. Oftentimes, people lose their affiliation while growing up. One may also convert to a new religion, for example, after a meaningful event. Imagine buying a pet, for example, a frog. You name your frog Jamie, and basically, you have read some articles about taking care of frogs, and you know how to take care of her. Now, we are worried not to mess things up, so you give all of yourself, and you devote time to taking care of her and to giving Jamie a good life. But then the winter comes along, and on one dark evening, you come back home, and Jamie, well, Jamie has frozen. Jamie has died while you were away. And you didn't leave the window open, nor has anybody else forgotten to lock the shutters. But it has happened, it, Jamie is dead. Depending on the religion you believe in now, you might believe that totally different things have happened to Jamie. Jamie might have reincarnated into another animal or another frog. Some might believe that Jamie has gone to a better place. And for some, she stopped existing at all. Jamie being gone, you're left with yourself. Now, should you feel guilty for her death? You're not to be blamed for something that you did not have control over. But was it then God's will to take her away? Was it predestined to happen? And in what world would any higher power decide to kill your frog and for no apparent reason? Is this some punishment or is there a lesson behind it? Lately, I took some time to think about how the lockdown was affecting people's faith. COVID has been deadly and has led to global lockdowns that had never happened before in history. And now, for us, pandemics is the present. But soon, hopefully, it will become another part of history. This further made me wonder how the tragedies and new extreme situations affect people's faith and attitude towards religion. Luckily, history provides countless examples to analyze. Example one, which started in year one. Jesus Christ and the birth of the religion Christianity. So in the first century, Christians have been persecuted, by which I mean they were fed to half stuffed animals, burned alive, and forced to fight warriors for the audience's amusement, which was pretty much an intense start for religion. Nero, the Roman emperor of those times, had blamed them for starting a, ro a fire in Rome. Now, he had to blame somebody, and he and his people had definitely not disobeyed the gods, so Christians took the blame. And history here demonstrates how, when inadequately oppressed, religious groups tend to gain popularity and even grow stronger. A thousand years forward, we have got the Crusaders. Now, we have all heard of the masses of Christians traveling to Jerusalem to take back their holy land from the Seljuk Turks in the 11th, 12th, and 13th century. After the Pope declared at the Council of Clermont that fighting for their holy land will bring the next salvation and reminiscence of sins, Crusaders had embarked on fatal missions that proved unsuccessful time after time. Monarchs and knights who took part had died. And what makes me wonder is how after the pilgrimage turned into a war, people hearing about all this didn't quit, quit the church, and they didn't leave, and they didn't rebel to stop the dying. They signed up for the next round. The promise of salvation and the deep belief that they are doing what God wills have driven them to take part in those journeys and have justified the wars and the massacres. What seems to be the case here is also that strong religious belief is stronger than the fear of death. And as long as people do believe in salvation and a better world, it is worth fighting, suffering, and dying for. Moving to the late 18th century France, we have got the Catholic Church owning a gigantic part of land and the clergy who is not even bound by taxes. Imagine. This caused the lower and middle class people to riot and later outlaw the Catholic Church. Now, what happened during the revolution was that priests and other religious followers were imprisoned and executed for their faith. And Catholic symbols, such as crosses and statues, were removed and destroyed. Nevertheless, later, Napoleon, when he ended the revolution, came to an agreement with the papacy and subordinated the church to his monarchy. 
Conclusions? Well, during the constant change and bloodshed, people had not lost faith, nor are they attacking their attachments to religion. On the contrary, despite most ardent attempts from the revolution to suppress people's beliefs, it failed, because during the time of terror, it was what they turned to. Hope that it dies last, as they say. Referring back to the present, we live in times where social life has been suppressed greatly, and online masses are even a thing. This has proven how much of an important part of religion is doing it in a unified community. In 2020, ma mosques were closed during the month of Ramadan, and moreover, Mecca and Medina were closed to pilgrims last year. This might remind you a bit of the religious persecutions happening before in history, since the executioner, the virus, didn't let people openly practice their religion, and they had to devote themselves to their rituals in almost hiding. The last example that I will talk about today is the Holocaust. During this genocide, two-thirds of the European Jewish population were exterminated. And despite the fact of million Judaism followers being executed for their faith, Jews had not lost the belief that they are the chosen people, meaning that they were chosen by God to cherish and to be in a covenant with him. Jews still share the conviction that they are God is omnibenevolent and omnipotent, meaning all powerful and all good. And a lot of theological work has been done on the subject, but Jews have not become less religious overall and atheistic. So what baffles me here is how does one stick to one's faith after a tragedy? How do we know that everything happens for a greater good, that there is a higher plan? And how can we even tell apart what's good? Unfortunately, I cannot give you answers to all of those questions. But what I do know is that religion can. Its very purpose is giving us those guidelines and those very answers that we seek, especially during the most difficult of times. That's why, through hardships such as COVID, people generally turn to it for a sense of purpose and belonging. Thank you.